Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you are returning and thank you for being here, being a part of the spiritual quest for the truth. I needed to share this because obviously after my last video about ancient China worshipping the one most high God, that led me on to a journey of discovery of even more things. And um, I came across Praveen Mohan, which I already knew about his channel anyway, because he does a lot of research about the um, ancient Hindu temples. And when I was really big into archaeology and stuff like that, I was a massive fan of Praveen's channel. Um, but as of like recently, I haven't really been into archaeology that as much from that sense. Um, so obviously when I was searching this, I came across it and it was a shock to me. Um, and I know watching Praveen's video as well, it was a shock to him. So basically in this video, Praveen, Praveen presents that there is solid evidence of the Christian cross in ancient Hindu temples. Okay. And what he's found is absolutely mind blowing. So I'm going to start the video and um, obviously I'm going to talk with what he shared. But this is Praveen's material. I'm not only like claim to this material, I'm just sharing um, the material from his channel. And obviously I'm going to be speaking about it. So here we go. If I can get it to work. Okay, so this is the Sun Temple in Madeira, and as you can see, this is in the main chamber, and at the top of this pillar, there's an image of a person with something hanging around their neck, which obviously it is a cross. Now, because of the location of this, obviously, you can only show so much because of the dark and the height of obviously where the, how high these pillars are. Um, so he's questioning this now, is this evidence of Christianity in ancient times? Now, archaeologists will confirm that the temple was built, you know, a thousand years ago. But according to mainstream um, archaeologists and historians, Christianity reached India as early as um, 52 AD. Now, I'm going to stop the video there a second. So that means that, you know, that was over 2000 years ago. So historians will argue that it was brought into India, Christianity was brought into India in the 15th century by Europeans. So that would mean that it's only like 600 years old. Um, so this obviously is mind blowing. And, you know, he, he wanted to find out more. So obviously he goes further now to the museum. So I'm going to carry on with the video. Um, but this is obviously Praveen in the temple. And he does travel to the museum in the temple complex because he wants to find out more about this statue because obviously he's never seen this. So this is Praveen going to the um, temple complex museum. And he does find another carving, funny enough, with the same cross around its neck. Um, so obviously this just absolutely blows Praveen's mind. Now, I have took notes here, so, because... This figure is labelled with its name and it's called um, Ch Chalik and it says it was carved in the 11th century so that's like a thousand years old. Now in this part of the video he makes a good point because most people say that all this Christian stuff was placed after the temple was built. Right, I'm going to pause the video again. After the temple was built because it was propaganda by the Christians. Um, you know, to cover up Hinduism and stuff like that. But Praveen makes a good point here because he says, why would they only make these carvings in and put them in these obscure places? Obviously, if they wanted to make false belief and stuff like that, they would put them everywhere and they'd have them where people can see, not have them in the dark, you know. So he does make a good point there. Um, and, and he does, obviously, this Praveen, this blows his mind, and I will tag the video, so you can watch the whole video for yourself, I just wanted to give a brief overview of it, but, um, he, he, this sets him off on his quest now, and he does, um, he finds another cross, which is like, uh, 1200 miles away, um, and it's like in another part of India, obviously it's 12,000 miles away, but, this just proves to Praveen, obviously, that there's more to this. So um, it's not just like, you know, just in one place, just, you know, for one one thing. Because obviously, you know, crosses are used for a lot of things. But the way that this is and what he finds out 
obviously that it, there's more to it. So this is the cross that he finds 12,000 years ago. Now, I think that this is some kind of Templar cross because look at it. It looks Templar a lot from the Knights Templar. Um, but obviously that wouldn't be that all that all those many years ago i don't know it might be the same actually i think it's about the same time so this is ravine again in the temple and i would love to go to india to see this this is another cross that he found again it looks templar like to me um and it almost looks shielded like vikingy you know um you know or even roman you know it could be roman as well um now this is interesting because i wasn't expecting this in the video even though I do know about it, but I just wasn't expecting it in India because all the locations that I have looked, I've researched, you know, India has never come up for this type of thing. So, like I've said before on this channel, there's cave paintings all around the world depicting the cross, which goes back thousands and thousands of years, like prehistoric, okay? Um, and Praveen found, obviously he found out, he didn't find this himself, but he shared this information, that in the hills in India of Madhya Pradesh, I think I'm saying that right, in central India, I mean, look at this, this is the cross, okay, the Christ, the cross, and this is going back thousands and thousands of years, as I said, and it's all been dated, and this is where it is in India, in Madhya Pradesh, as I said, central India and all this has been dated and confirmed by experts that it is prehistoric between 10,000 and 3,000 years ago so I'm just gonna pause the video there wow 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 like this I'm so glad that Praveen shared this because this proves that the ancient people of India were worshipping the cross independently because the gospel wasn't there then so this is incredible this is absolutely incredible and you know, this is thousands and thousands of years before Christ was even born. So, you know, there's, there's something to this. And he even said himself, you know, as you'll see in the video, this shocked him because he couldn't imagine ancient people of India worshipping the cross as a religious ritual. So, but, you know, this is said that it, it's evidence, it's evidence for that not only was uh, ancient in Hindus worshipping, but also prehistoric so it's incredible and it absolutely blows my mind so yeah i'm gonna um continue with the video now and as you'll see this is the cross and he's obviously outlined that it's people worshiping the cross so it's absolutely incredible and that is i think the end of the video so I'm going to be sharing something else that I found out now, which is pretty incredible. Let me just see if this is still recording. There it is. And it, this is a Muslim Hindu, right, sharing the Vedas, the highest Vedas in Hindu. That's, that's in, in Hindu religion. But he goes, he says that Hindu is not a religion. It is, you know, if you're from um, the Hindu Valley, um, the name was actually given by the Arabic people. So I'm going to stop this video and then start the next video. Now this, I found this on my little journey of discovering. This is Dr. Zakia Naik. Right, I hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. I'm probably not. Um, and as I said, he is a Muslim Hindu, right? And he goes on to say that Hindu is not a religious definition. It does not exist in any of the Hindu scriptures before the advent of Arabs in, in India, okay? So, basically, he's saying the definition of Hindu is the people that live in the Hindu valleys, and it, the name was given by the Arabs when they went into India. Now, this is interesting, because he goes on to... Because he's having a conversation with um, a Hindu. I, I presume he's, the guy's not a Muslim. He's a practising Hindu. And... Um, this is why he is going on to say about the Hindu scriptures, just to see if the guy knows the scriptures, basically. And he's saying that the high Veda scriptures basically t t tell the, the Hindu people 
to worship only one God and that God is only one without a second. Okay, so this is incredible because this is the first time I've ever come across this. And obviously I I love I love Hindu culture. I've always said I don't think it was a religion, I always thought it was a culture. And that would make sense by him saying it was obviously from where, where you're from, because obviously culture's where you're from, isn't it? What you're around, what you grew up amongst. So that would make sense. So according to the Vedas of Hinduism, Hindus should only worship one God, one almighty God. And he also goes on to say that uh, of God, there is no superior. And of that God, there is no image. So you shouldn't make no image, no carvings, no anything else. But what I'm going to say is I'm going to play the video and obviously so you can see for yourself. So here we go. If you're religious, believe, do you believe in one God? Well, sir, I know where we're going, but uh, I'm a very strong believer of the fact. No, I that, don't. Uh, I'm saying a statement would not. No, I'm not telling you, brother. I'm not you telling you to change your religion. Put me in a mosque. I'm that not has... telling. I'm not doing change your religion. If I ask you, do you believe in God? You said yes. If I said, do you believe in ideas? You may say no. Then I will correct you. Okay, okay. Uh, so, so your question is, do you believe in? Do you believe God? in one God? No. I believe in a lot of gods. Okay, we have fine. 33 crores Very good, God. very good. Now I want to help you. Don't become a Muslim. But I want to help you. Because you are not a Muslim, I want to help you more. Now you said you believe in 33 crore gods. Where you got this from? The Hindu scriptures, correct? Now if you read Chandogya... Your... I just heard about it, sir. From to be where? Honest, oh, so you believe... Cited... Oh, mashallah. So you believe in anything what you hear? Why don't you believe in what you hear from me? Well, sir... I... Am I your enemy, brother? I love you. Brother, I love you. Where, where I come from, uh, it's, it's not that uh, I've just heard it from one person, the way you said it. Uh, but yeah, I've heard it from my parents, my uncles, and probably 1.2 uh, billion. Basically, the point that is making here is you've only heard that from people that have told you, like tradition, for faith. Um, but, you know... If you actually read the scriptures, this is what he's going to go on to say, basically. It will tell you um, not that, obviously, you should only worship one God. Um, so this is where they're getting to now with this conversation. So I just thought I'd say that because I forgot to mention that. People in India believe Fine. exactly the way I believe. Fine. So so, I, so it's not that all, all of us are all of us are doing something wrong. I'll correct you. There's something which you. we are doing right, which is common between I disagree. Us, which I believe is Hinduism. I disagree that 1.2 billion believe. I do agree majority of the Hindus believe, not all. I know many Hindus who disagree with what you have said. Because those who have read the Hindu scriptures, where you get this from? From the scriptures. Correct. Anyone says from the mind, if your father tomorrow says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, will you believe? If, your father, sir, says, I, I didn't if your father says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, will you believe? Uh, well, not unless somebody corrects me. No, if your father tells you today, 2 okay. plus 2 is equal to 5. No, will you believe? I will not believe. MashaAllah, you're an educated man. Therefore, you won't believe. Correct? Okay. Now, I'm giving you reference from your scriptures. Okay. And you have to ask your father, in Hindu scriptures, as I mentioned earlier, there are two types of scriptures. One is Shruti, one is Smriti. Shruti means the word of God. Vedas, uh, Upanishads. Next comes Smriti. The Puranas, the Itihas, Ramayan, Mahabharat. If you read Upanishad, the most superior, it's mentioned in Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number 6, section number 2, verse number 1. Ikkap evidityam. God is only one without a second. It's a Sanskrit quotation, brother. God is only one without a second, so here we go. Ikkam evidityam. God is only one without a second. It's mentioned in the Sveta Setar Upanishad, chapter number 6, verse number 9. Nakasya kasij janitana chadipa. Of that God, there is no superior. There are no parents. It's mentioned in... Of that God, there is no superior, there is no parent. So what does that sound like to you? Most high God to me. It sounds like the most high God to me. Sita Sita Upanishad, chapter number four, verse number 19. Na Pratima Asti. Of that God, there is no image. Pratima in Sanskrit means an image, a photograph, a painting, a picture, a sculpture, a statue. Sita Sita Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19 says, Na tasya patima asti. Of that God, there are no images, no photographs, no paintings, no pictures, no statues, no idols. If you read the way that. No statues and no idols. What does that sound like? You see, so th this this is an important thing. You know, like most, most of my 
spiritual friends um, that are practicing Hindus worship so many gods and are used to in yoga without even knowing it, you know, and, and, and because they think that, and I thought that as well, was because there was a God for everything, you know, but really there is only one God. And you, like I said before on this channel, you find the, the most high God in all religion, okay? And you also find Satan in all religions. So it, it because as, as I said, fa Satan is the father of lies. So he knows, he knows the scriptures better than anyone. So he will twist them and turn them and turn man against each other and turn man against God. And, 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 you know, I'm finding this the more that I'm like delving into religion, like really, like really peeling it back rather than scratching the surface. Um, don't take what the mainstream saying, you know, really go and, and, and see and listen to people that have come before and spoke about it. Because most people that do speak out about it get shut down. It's not just people that are speaking out in the spiritual community, in the new age and stuff that uh, are getting shut down. No, no, it's, it's religious people. It's people that are trying to teach people about the scriptures, about, you know, not being took away by doctrine. You know, these are the people that are really getting attacked, these kind of people. But anyway, I don't know if he's getting a sector. I'm just saying it's not like the truth isn't just hidden in the new age. So what we what we used to think, oh, this is the hidden truth. What I used to think, sorry, what I used to think. And uh, it's also in religion as well. This is what I'm trying to say. So you really have to search, you know, and it is a spiritual quest for God, for God Almighty, Lord God. So, you know, it, like I said, you find God everywhere and it just absolutely it just excited me so much. And I mean, I, I'm so grateful to Praveen for sharing this and I'm so grateful for Dr. Sakir for sharing this talk as well, for having this conversation. I'm going to continue with the video now. I'm talking about the highest scriptures, I'm not talking about low scriptures. I'm talking about Shrutis. Shrutis consists of Upanishads and Vedas. It's mentioned in Yajur Ved, chapter number 32, verse number 3, Natasya Pratimasti. Of that God, there is no Pratima. Of that God, there are no images, there are no photographs, there are no paintings, there are no pictures, there are no idols, there are no statues. Hallelujah. You will tell me, I know where you are taking me. I am not taking you anywhere, I am taking you to your scriptures. <laughs> I am taking you to your scriptures. Fine? That's a different thing, your scriptures match with the Quran, what can I do? Furthermore, brother, if you read Yajurvei chapter number 40, verse number 9, it says, Andhat Prabhavishanti ya asambuti mupaste. They are entering darkness. Those who worship the Asambuti. Asambuti are natural things like fire, water, air, etc. Who said that? Dejurve. See, now listen to this. This is people that worship those things, the natural things like fire, water and air. And then listen to what else he goes on to say. I thought this was incredible because look how many people are doing that today. I used to do it as well. I'm guilty. I'm not judging anyone because I used to do these things without even, without even questioning it. You know, but look how much I question God. You know, it was it's crazy when I look at it and, and it's all like um it's all like a table, you know, and it and it's flipped up. But now it's like everything slots into place, if that makes sense. But listen to what it goes on to say. And the verse continues. They are entering more in darkness, those who worship the Sambuti. Sambuti are the created things like table, chair, car, idol, etc. Who says that? Yajurved, chapter number forty, verse number nine. Now See, so he's even quoting chapter and verse here. Yeah. Listen, this is so similar as well. Like you shouldn't worship worship material things. It's so it's so similar. It's unbelievable, and I, I just think it's amazing, and that's why I had to share it. Um, and I'm just going to continue on now. When your father told you about three three pro gods, I don't know whether he gave you references or not. I'm giving you references. You can take my references, note it down, take the video cassette. Go and ask your father. Go and ask your pundit. I am not telling you to believe me blindly, brother. You believed your father blindly. You did a mistake once. Don't do the mistake the second time. And I'm going to end it there. But I love that what he said. You made that mistake once. Don't make the mistake a second time. And that was like me jumping in. Like when I first, I didn't want to jump into like the charismatics or anything like that. I wanted to just find it naturally and obviously thankfully God came to me and met me where I was at and only through reading the gospel and knowing the truth 
can you recognize it you see it's like what um i love this thing what i learned the other day well what i heard the other day um how people how counterfeit spot how can people that spot counterfeit money how they learn is because they spend so much time studying the real thing and it never changes but the counterfeit changes so that's like god you know god is the same today as he was yesterday as he will be tomorrow or same yesterday as he is today as he will be tomorrow it's you know it, it never changes and you're finding this the more that you look in, well, the more that I look into it, I'm finding that. Like the most high God never changes. The basic commandments never change. Um, and it's incredible. It blows my mind. It gives me goosebumps. So thank you so, so much for being here for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, if you've got any questions or any, any your own opinion, please share them in the comments. If you'd like me to look into anything as well, get in touch, share, share it in the comments. Um, I love being able to share the truth, you know, and, and, and delve into it and let's explore. This is what I mean. Like I, I don't judge anyone. Yeah. I know who my Lord and Savior is, but I know everybody doesn't. And my only hope is that people are not going on being deceived. That is my main objective. As I said, is sharing the truth, making sure nobody's being deceived like I was. So yeah, thank you for being here. I'm sending you lots of love. I will keep you all in my prayers and I, yeah. Keep safe. Take care.